This is the Mercedes AMG E53 Cabriolet, and this is the last of a dying breed of four seater luxury convertibles. And in this video, we're going to find out why these cars are so rare on the road nowadays, and we're going to discuss is this vehicle worth $95,000 plus all the insane gadgets and gizmos. <laughs> First though, I think we need to lower this convertible top, see what the mechanism looks like, and talk about the design. I think Mercedes has done a really good job styling the four-seater E-Class convertible. Now this segment is quite small now, but at one point it was really big and we saw a lot of really ugly designs. Think like the BMW 6 Series, but Mercedes has done a really tasteful job with the proportions of the E53 here. Um, I really do enjoy the long hood. I think they've done a nice job styling the rear end and I specifically like this one part. Now they really have done something cool with this piece of matte silver trim. It's continuous and makes a loop around the entire belt line of the vehicle. So it starts here in the back near the tonneau cover, zooms its way toward the front, and then continues all the way along the cowl here, down to the other side and back around. I just think this looks fantastic. And it really does bring a nautical theme into the E53. I also love the way they have specced this particular model. This is called Polar White. Of course, this is an AMG model, a higher performance model, but the shiny black contrasted against more of the matte black on the Polar White just looked fantastic. In the back, full wraparound LED taillights, and here in the US, red turn signals. And then to let other drivers know that you are driving something a little bit high performance, we've got quad exhaust outlets. However, it's worth noting, if you look deep in there, really only two true functional pipes with quad outlets, in this case, finished in black. So the engine in this model, this being the E53, is a three liter inline six turbocharged with something called EQ Boost, which is a mild hybrid system, helps with off the line acceleration, gives you boosts in between gear changes, that kind of thing. Total system output, 429 horsepower, 384 pound feet of torque. No, this is not the fire breathing V8, but it is still pretty darn quick. What do you think of these seats? Now, these are a $3,000 option. They are finished in saddle brown against black. Of course, Napa leather. Um, I was always told growing up, you're not supposed to mix brown and black, but in this context, because it's such a light brown, it does look quite nice, especially with the contrasting brown stitching. One of the cool seat features that Mercedes pioneered is the air scarf. Now push this button and a little fan, actually two little fans located in the headrest, will blow hot air right back there on your neck. It feels awesome, especially when you're convertibling in some colder weather. And compared to the older systems, it's also surprisingly quiet and non-distracting. Getting into the back seat of the E53 is a very convenient process because as soon as you open up the door and grab this lever, when it hits that forward most position, the seat slides forward electrically. And let's see what the rear seat legroom is like. This is my driving position at six feet tall. Put it back, it's gonna glide back to where I was. Headrest is gonna rise. And actually, this is one of the few four-door convertibles, or I should say four-seat convertibles, where I am surprisingly comfortable. There have been a lot of really poor attempts at back seats in these uh, two plus two convertibles, but in this case, very comfortable. One of the more unusual features too in a convertible, I've got my own little window, and it's operated down here by this window switch. So one of the best design elements inside the E53 is the steering wheel. I love the latest generation of Mercedes steering wheel, especially with this dual wing design. And I don't know if you can really tell on video, but they're actually not connected. There's space in between them and they look fantastic. Now, all the buttons on the steering wheel are touch sensitive. So they're not old school, traditional tactile buttons. Instead, you can kind of move your finger throughout them and change all the functions, not only for the instrument cluster, but for the main screen. Now, below the two main spokes, we have these control knobs. The one on the right is a general mode selector, and there's actually a little display screen in there, which tells you what mode you're going into. The one on the left is much more configurable, so I can specifically, like for example, dial in 
the exhaust note, or I can dial in the transmission setting, or I can change the AMG dynamics by pushing a button all throughout this little steering wheel multifunction switch. Across the middle section of the Mercedes, you'll notice this black ash, and there's an exposed grain. It's a wood finish, but I think it looks great. And four vents. That's right, not two, but four. And they all have their own individual controls. So you actually twist on them to close them. You can point them in any direction, but tons and tons of adjustability. And you'll also note they have little inset LEDs. One of the best parts of any Mercedes are the dual screens. And I specifically love the one for the gauge cluster. Very configurable with tons of information, but you can actually change the overall design, which I think is very unique to Mercedes in terms of the number of options they give you. Uh, and within the options, you have additional <laughs> options, which is just very, very cool. Now, my personal favorite is actually one called understated. Take a look at this. It turns your gauge cluster into a lounge, giving you your speed and a clock and nothing else. Now, both the instrument cluster and the infotainment screen are 12.3 inches, and they are both very high resolution in my opinion, and just like the instrument cluster, you can actually control the main screen via this little touchpad on the steering wheel. Now, this being an AMG has lots and lots of information that you can display via the AMG pages. So you've got uh, track race, drag race, all sorts of telemetry all built into this vehicle. Across the middle of the Mercedes are your climate control panels. Now you have little toggles up and down and that will display on the screen what your temperature setting is. And if you ever want to shortcut directly to the climate control panel screen, simply push down on the menu button. Another cool thing too is this car actually has an air freshener built into the glove box with three different modes depending on how much air freshness you want out of that freshener. And that actually little unit lives inside the glove box. Let me show you that now. So simply pop it open and it lives down here in this little cartridge and then you can pull it out if you need a refill and they are all kind of tailored to the vehicle. So this is the AMG inspired one, specifically AMG number 63. Down the central console, we see more black ash push in and that reveals a wireless charger and then of course a USB-C port to connect Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Let's see if it'll charge the larger phones. Yep, looks like it fits in there nicely. As we continue our way down, we see yet another way to control the central screen, which is this little rotary knob, very similar to the BMW iDrive system. To the right of that is a physical volume knob, which I definitely appreciate. And to the left of this rotary control, we have some more vehicle settings that we can play with. So you can use this toggle to go through dynamic modes. You can engage manual and then transmission, play with the suspension, all that kind of thing. Moving our way right toward the center armrest, push in on this button and both sides swing open. It reveals two more USB-C ports. Now this control is a multi-function switch. Pull up on here, all four windows rise open. This is the control for the convertible top, and this one is for the wind blocker, which by the way is ginormous. So the other aspect that goes along with the rear part of the wind blocker is the front portion. Check this out when you push the button. That also rises to aid in some buffeting removal. As with a lot of other Mercedes cars, to get into the trunk, push in on the star, and it glides open. Now the trunk is quite small and it's worth noting, see this big kind of boxy looking thing? This is where the convertible top lives. So you do lose a little bit of trunk space with the top down, but some cool stuff back here. Check this out. You can actually put the seats down using an electronic switch on either side of the vehicle. You also have your little first aid kit back here. And if we lift up the floor, we find not a whole lot. <laughs> We've got a fuse panel and then of course your little eyelet toe, but no spare tire in this car. With the seat popped, you can see that just the backrest folds down, not the headrest portion. And it is a relatively small entry into the trunk, but still better than nothing. I think one thing that Mercedes does better than any other vehicle manufacturer is their cold weather convertible performance. When you put it in what I call winter mode, so all four windows up, the wind deflectors up, and the air scarf on, this, it's just so incredibly comfy. Even when it's like 40s, low 50s, even maybe high 30s, you can drive this car super comfortably. Usually we can't do our audio 
with the tops down because the mics get blown out, but not in the E53. Now, in terms of straight out performance, full throttle. <laughs> so this engine is an absolute gem. It doesn't get the same publicity as the big old V8, but it revs to 6,500 RPM. And when you turn the exhaust mode on the loudest setting, oh yeah, it sounds really, really cool. Now from a ride and handling standpoint, if you dial in like the dynamic mode on the suspension, you can hustle it around, but it's not necessarily happy doing that. This is a large, heavy four-seater convertible. It's just not the ultimate in performance vehicle. And the other complaint I have is if we go into comfort mode, it is pretty firm, a little bit too firm for kind of that ultimate cruiser vibe that you might expect out of a $95,000 uh, Mercedes especially if you just wanna you know, look cool and drive around your city. But for the most part, really enjoy the way this car drives. I also love the fact that this car has the 4 system, the all-wheel drive system. So unlike the SL, if you own this car here in Colorado, this could potentially be your only car if you put better tires on it for the winter time um, because of that all-wheel drive system and of course a nine-speed automatic. So what happened to this class of big, luxurious, comfortable four-seater luxury vehicles? Well, the four-seater convertible is just, it's not really in vogue. And these large personal luxury coupes are kind of in that same vein. But I think that's a shame because it is beautifully well-made, really fun to drive, and surprisingly comfortable for four passengers, which you just don't get in a lot of other uh, four seat convertibles with the little tiny back seat. So if you have a family or friends and you want to enjoy the open top goodness, you really just can't beat the E53 Cabriolet. Now, is it worth $95,000? In my opinion, I think as a package, it is yes. It doesn't excel necessarily at one thing in particular. It's not the quickest car in the world. It's not the most comfortable, but as an overall thing to drive around with the top down in, on a beautiful evening, this car is hard to beat. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, this has been Tommy with the Fast Lane car. Check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews.